In our discussion on the properties of enzymes, we mentioned one very important property of enzymes, namely the ability of the enzyme to catalyze the biological reactions that take place inside our body and inside our cells. Now, what that ultimately means is enzymes speed up the rate at which chemical reactions take place. Now, by speeding up a chemical reaction, enzymes essentially decrease the time that is needed for that particular chemical reaction to actually reach equilibrium. Now, this is a very important thing to remember about enzymes. Enzymes decrease the time that is needed to reach equilibrium, but enzymes do not actually change the equilibrium itself. They do not change the energy of the products and reactants, nor they actually change the amount of products or reactants that is formed at equilibrium. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following energy diagram. So, Let's suppose we have a hypothetical elementary single step reaction in which the reactants are these and the products are these. So on the reactant side we have a bond between A and B and C exists by itself. On the product side we now have a bond between B and C and A exists by itself. Now, based on the following energy diagram, so the y-axis is the Gibbs free energy and the x-axis is the reaction progress, so we go from reactants to products, notice that if we compare the y-coordinate value of the products to the y-coordinate value of the reactants, this is lower in energy than this. And what that means is, if we take the free energy of the products and we subtract it from the free energy of the reactants, we get a negative value. And what that means is, free energy will be produced, will be released, when this reaction takes place. The delta G is negative. And so that implies this reaction is exergonic, it is spontaneous, and as long as we have enough energy to overcome the activation barrier, this quantity here, the reactants will spontaneously and naturally form these products because they are lower in energy and therefore more stable. So, once again, enzymes do not affect the free energy value of the products, nor will they affect the free energy value of the reactants. And since the energy value of the products and reactants will not be affected, that means the delta G, the difference between this and this, will not be affected as well. Now, because it's the energy of the products and reactants, and specifically it's the difference between the energy of the products and reactants that determines the concentrations of products and reactants that will exist at equilibrium, because the enzymes do not affect the energy values of the products and reactants, they will not affect the concentration of the products and reactants that will exist at equilibrium. So, once again, we know that enzymes do not affect the free energy of the reactants and products. This implies that they will not change the equilibrium of the reaction, that is, the same concentration of products and reactants will be formed in the presence as in the absence of the enzyme. So this is the case where we have our uncatalyzed reaction, but if we add an enzyme, the energy value of the reactants and products will not actually change. Now, if the thermodynamics of the products and reactants is not changed by an enzyme, what is actually changed? Well, recall that the kinetics of the chemical reaction is determined by the energy of the transition state. And the transition state is this transient molecule, transient stage that exists between the reactants and our products. Now, what exactly will the transition state look like when we go from the reactants to the products? Well, we have a single elementary, a single step elementary reaction in which on the reactant side we have a bond between A and B, and on the product side we have a bond between B and C. And what that implies is to actually go from the reactants to the products, we have to break the bond between A and B, and we have to form the bond between B and C. So in that transition stage, what we're going to see is 
a bond breaking between A and B. So B will begin to move away from A and because the electron density will basically move away, that bond between A and B will begin to break. And that can be described by using a dashed line. So this dashed line between A and B basically moves, B is moving away and the bar and, and that bond is being broken. On the other hand, because B is approaching C, the electron densities of these two atoms or molecules is overlapping and so we begin to form, uh, we begin to form that bond. So we have a partially formed bond here and a, partial, and a partially broken bond here. And because the electron densities aren't overlapping very well, that will increase the energy of the transition state. In fact, According to the diagram, the energy of the transition state represents the highest possible free energy value on the following curve. And so if we are to actually mark down on the curve where that transition state actually is, this highest most peak on the curve, the apex, represents that transition state. So we can basically write that this is in fact that transition state. It represents the highest, the maximum energy value in that particular chemical reaction. And this daggered symbol describes the energy state. So to calculate the free energy value of the transition stage of that molecule of that chemical reaction, we simply take this y coordinate value and we subtract the energy of the reactants. So the energy of the transition state minus the energy of the reactants give, gives us this quantity known as the free energy or uh, the, the free energy of activation or simply the activation energy, the activation barrier of this particular chemical reaction. Now what happens is when the enzyme actually takes in these molecules, so we have the enzyme, in the enzyme we have this special location in that enzyme that we're going to discuss in much more detail in the next lecture, but this special location in the enzyme is known as the active site. And it's the active site that creates a microenvironment and binds to these molecules here. So these reactants will move into the active site of that enzyme creating the enzyme substrate complex. And what the enzyme actually does inside that active site is it stabilizes this partially broken bond and this partially formed bond. And by stabilizing these partially broken and formed bonds, it lowers the energy of activation. It stabilizes the transition state, lowering that free energy of activation. And if we lower that free energy of activation, we increase the rate at which that reaction takes place. So once again, enzymes bind specific substrates on regions called active sites to form the enzyme substrate complex. By binding substrates to the active sites, enzymes stabilize the energy of the transition state, which in turn stimulates the breakage of the old bonds and the formation of the new bonds to form that product molecule as shown in this particular diagram. So if we look at the following diagram once more, when we go from the uncatalyzed to the catalyzed case, we see that the energy of the products or reactants is not changed. This energy is the same as this energy value and this energy is the same as this energy. So the change in Gibbs free energy between our products and reactants is not changed. What is changed is the energy between the transition state and the reactants. So here we see that there's a stable a stabilization of the transition state and a lowering in energy and that means the difference between the energy of this transition state and the reactants will be smaller in this case than in this case and this is precisely what makes that reaction actually go quicker so by adding an enzyme we increase the or we decrease the time it takes 
for equilibrium to actually establish. But once equilibrium is actually established, the same concentrations of products and reactants are formed in the catalyzed case as that uncatalyzed case. Now, let's discuss something called the maximum velocity of enzymes. So, the maximum velocity of enzymes basically describes the maximum activity at which the enzyme will actually operate. So, let's suppose in our mixture we have a total of 100 enzymes, and each one of these enzymes will have its own active site. Now, if we add 50 substrate molecules, then only 50 enzymes will contain active sites that are filled. And that means our entire mixture, because only half of the enzymes are filled, the entire activity of all the enzymes will be half of its maximum value. But if we continue adding substrate molecules so that we add, let's say, 100 substrate molecules, then all the active sites on all the enzymes will be filled, and that means the entire activity of our mixture of enzymes will be at a maximum velocity. And that's exactly what this graph actually represents. So the y-axis is the enzyme activity, also called the enzyme velocity, and the x-axis is the substrate concentration. So basically, this dashed line represents the maximum velocity at which that enzyme or the mixture of enzymes will actually operate. And notice, we have this line and this curve will never actually cross this line. It will never actually go higher than the line because if we have, for example, 100 enzymes, we only have 100 possible active sites. So even if we add, let's say, 200 substrate molecules, because we have an excess of substrate molecules and only 100 active sites, we have a maximum activity at which only 100 active sites at a time can actually be filled. So as we increase our substrate concentration, we see that, uh, that the enzyme activity increases up to a certain value known as the maximum enzyme activity or maximum enzyme velocity. So we see that at a constant concentration of enzyme, the enzyme activity will continue to rise until a certain maximum value is reached known as the maximum velocity. And the maximum velocity represents the condition in which all the active sites, this should be active, not activate. So let's change that. So all the active sites act active. So all the active sites are filled with the appropriate substrate. So that basically represents the condition in which if let's say we have a thousand enzymes, each enzyme has one active site. If we have 1000 substrate molecules, then all the active sites will be filled. And that is the point at which that enzyme is operating at a maximum enzyme velocity at a maximum enzyme activity. So in the next lecture, we're going to focus on how that active site actually stabilizes that transition state. And we're going to focus Focus much more on what that active site actually does and how it binds to its appropriate substrate molecule.